Can she die already? Damn! Boy! Jesus Christ! Speaks more to the fact that they could be a kind of together. Kyoko, and I mean, phew, man, I have had the worst day. Hero. Um, hero. Huh? Oh, hey, man. Uh, yeah. Duh. Who else could I? Would it be? Um, that's a good huh? question. Huh? What? Why do I look like this? What? what? Did someone come along and remodel me I, while sleeping? Was it the Illuminati? What the f is he talking about? Right. I found Hero. He was jamming into the pool room locker. It looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and woke Don't him up. Don't be mean! I still can't believe you kicked me. You could have been a little more gentle about it. Like, I don't know, caress your f my face or something? Like that? That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden without a trace. Wow. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never mind. I can't, never mind. It's nothing. Never mind? Hey. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? Does she know? Does she know people think she might be spying for the mastermind? First of all, Hero, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like I mean... Uh, um... Well, I mean... I have no idea. One second I was asleep. Don't know... Don't, don't even know how that happened. Then I woke up, and then I was here. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me just to look at huh? you. Well, um, Let me out I don't of know here. what's up with this thing, but I can't g actually get it off. <laughs> Why would you make something like that so you can't take off by yourself? Not at all wrong. I didn't make that stupid freaking thing. It would seem... There's a, cla a class on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. Sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help you. It looks, it look, it took everyone's help, but slowly we were able to get Hero out of it. It look, it took a few minutes, but eventually we all got, uh, <laughs> uh, got off the pieces. Phew, free at last. Mm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits Hero? So then, more to the point, nobody but Hero would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um, wait. What? Hold on a sec. Honestly. Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints, um, were in your room as well. Is that okay? In other words, it is obvious to everyone that you made the costume. Did we talk about the blueprints being in his room? Or did Biakia? That's true. I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Could it be? Then it's obvious. The one, the one who put the costume on and went around attacking That's everyone terrible. was Hero. <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Just the worst. Good idea. We wouldn't want to him him oh, kill him anymore. Tie me up. Hold on, guys. I think that's going a little that's far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair hmm. treatment. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, attacking blueprints. I have no idea what you guys are talking what about. What the heck? You can't talk your way out of this! It's been decided! You killed them! <laughs> what? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running what are you around. Saying? You're the only one who can wear this costume! So who else could possibly be the cus costume to attack? <laughs> How did you know I'm the only one? Maybe you sound... Maybe you should try it on yourself before you okay. can Fine! If you're gonna be a jerk about it, I will!
Without missing a, a bit, Hina started putting on the Robo Justice costume. Huh! See? Look! See how loose it is? I mean, come on! I'm blind as a bat in here! Can't see my feet at all! I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing! I'm telling you, it wasn't me! And not to mention... You totally can't bend at the waist! Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say! I mean, it's not like I made it! I just got caught up in the moment! Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. Oh. Well, now you're all out of excuses. Uh, um... No, no, see? It's cause you're a girl. If it were a guy, then... <laughs> Makoto, go ahead. You're taller than me. Uh, okay. Against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried to put them on. It's no good. The arms are too big. There's no way I Just can Just a second. This. See? I told you it was impossible. <laughs> you are absolutely you are absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hero's body exactly. But then then there's another costume. They must have one that looks the same but fits Honestly. them. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence. <laughs> you claim there is another suit, yes? Then you must find it and show us. <laughs> what the heck? Just the worst. Who cares? Hero's the only one without an alibi during this whole That's thing. That's terrible. Anyway. <clears throat> Which is how we knew it was him. What? I mean, is that really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could someone like tell me? Robo Justice costume has been added to the Truth Bullet section of your handbook. Where's Sakura? And Toko. What the heck? Uh, um, if you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I found and figured out that someone's been killed, right? Hey, Makoto, who was it? Well, two people were killed. Take and Mifu. What? What? Two people? Just the worst. Why are you freaking out? You did it! Please. I did not! Huh? Wait, hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed... How about that? That's it. I know who did it. So then... You may as well tell us. Hmm. Taka and Hifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? I'm at least 30% Which means right. Alter Ego and or Chihiro would yeah. have done. I see. That's unfortunate. Please! Huh? Unfortunate? What the heck? Stop trying to trick us! Just admit that you did it, okay? Um... I, I'm trying to... I'm telling you. You got it all wrong. Oh, so bad. Ah, I know. That note. Note. Uh, um... Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. <sighs> But the last thing I remember is going to the rec room. Then for some reason I fell hey. asleep. The real killer probably drugged me Just or something. Worst. Not a chance. So... No, hold on. He could be onto something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that huh? could do that. What, what really? <sighs> I told you, someone's trying to set me up. A secret passage, a chance to escape. Someone uh, wrote all that trick uh. to trick me. Even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite every piece of bait that floats in front of you. <sighs> well, after being trapped here for so long, even if I know it's a lie, you still gotta check yeah! right Yo! They preyed on my desire to get out of here. They deceived me. <sighs> I still don't buy it. Don't be mean. Well, you should buy it. Just a second. Okay, then show us that note. Hmm. With pleasure. I have it right here in, um... No way! Looks like I lost it. Uh. Yeah, sure. Please. Please! You gotta believe me! I wouldn't hurt a fly! <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the note? I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want us to believe you, give us a reason. Uh. What the heck? For serious? 
Yasuhiro's account has been added to the truth bullet <laughs> section of your handbook. Now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the trial class trial begins. <clears throat> Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it! What the heck? Why? Why did you kill them? Tell us uh -huh. he was! No, it's like I said. Just the worst. Was it really to get money? The money from Monokuma offered us? Yeah. That must be it. You must be totally broken, that's why. <laughs> Wait, that's a false accusation. Someone help me. What are you saying? Just be thankful we haven't bound and gagged you. Hmm. If you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for your evidence, right? What? Ah, right, you're right. I need to look for the second suit in that note. Feet don't fail me now. I guess I'd better get back on guard duty. I was gonna ask Toko, or Genocide Jack, to switch with me. Mm. But if she was so and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have to a catastrophic ca ca catastrophe on our hands. Well, bye! One by one, everyone peeled yeah. away. Makoto, do you have a second? Huh? I want you to help me with this investigation. It, seem... it looks like I got a late start on this one, so I need to make up some ground. Sure, I don't mind helping, but can you promise me something? Later, when we have time, will you tell me why you why disappeared? That? No. To reject me so simply. Anyway. Anyway, I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Uh, okay. Shall we go? Thanks. Now, shot then, shall we? Hey. So, Makoto, first I'd like to examine the corpses. Examine the corpses? I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl of the same Correct. age as me. Their bodies don't lie, you know? They tell the truth far more easily than the hey. lady. Hey. Would you agree? How am I supposed to answer? Anyway. Anyway, or anyway, we have to hurry before the class trial begins. Yeah, you're right. Okay, then. Show me where the bodies are. They're in the refer repository. Then I guess we should head that way for now. Ifumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seems so rigid, but only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched down, she crouched down next to Taka, and without hesitation began poking and prodding I the body. I knew it. The Manakuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth. She was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. See. Makoto, Makoto, I found something. You did? Hey. You remember the wrist wristwatch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did? Ooh. Are you so uh, oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? No, n no, that's not it. Anyway, so you said he so had a, a watch. Take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving. Right, excuse me. It's most likely, it's most, it most likely broke when he had his encounter with the assailant. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past six o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime That's after right. six. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey, you! How long are you gonna keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he stared, uh, started pointing at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock! You know that? Bedtime for all the little boys and girls! In other words... So if it had worked at 10 last night, it wouldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning, it must have happened 6 this morning. Broken wristwatch has been added to However, the section. section. And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. He appears to be gripping something. You're right. There's something white Makoto. in there. Can you try and pull it out? Me. Because... Rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor, right? Okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped, grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice cold hand was nearly enough to caused my heart to stop beating. After some some effort, I was finally able to 
free the object from the his tidy, tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper. Hey. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrape of paper. Doesn't seem like Is much of a clue. Right? I wonder about that. Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's so body. Then. Let's check Hifumi's body. Now, perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. Kiyotaka's scrap, uh, scrap of paper has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. <coughs> the biggest problem I have right now is how the killer was able to move Hifumi's uh, massive corpse. From the nurse's office where he was discovered to here, the respiratory. All the way from the first floor to the third floor and all without anyone noticing. I just can't see how that's possible. Further, it seems that Hifumi died from a blow to the head. He was most likely killed using Justice Hammer 3, which we found in the nurse's office, but when we found his body in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered in blood. But now they're spotless. Does that mean someone wiped his glasses clean? But who would do that and why? So, did you find Indeed. anything? I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper. That's right. Ifumi had it hidden. Hidden? Indeed. He'd stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he'd hidden it on the in his pants? Wait, so you? Why is that? It was just his pants. Not like his socks or something. I don't know what that hey. means. Excuse me. Anyway, or... Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think... When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important, he told me. Or I'll forgive, never forgive you for this. A note... I found a hole. Maybe we can use. Maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment at six a.m. I already read that. So that sounds very familiar. That's it. It's the same thing Hero said. Then he was telling the truth. However, although. It's not exactly the same, is it? Uh, um... Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. Well, the Kuba can't find out. No tell. Yeah, it says one. Wow. The time is different. So, maybe my theory that I have of Taka and, and Hifumi both taking each other out? Because if it was 1 a.m., that could have been Taka sending that to to Hero, right? To then go into his room because Hero's room was unlocked, right? And stash that stuff. And then he went to Ifumi and said the same thing, gave him the same note, but made it 6 a.m. And his watch broke at 6 a.m., right? So that could have been Ifumi trying to defend himself. Hiro, To, and Hifumi and Kiyotaka were on the same night. Maybe Biakia, or Kiyotaka initiated and then ended up dead like uh, how uh, um, uh, Sayaka was. Hiro told us that his note said to meet at 1 a.m. But the note they wrote to Hifumi asked him to meet Is at 6 a.m. Right? Oh, no. Just because Hifumi had the note doesn't mean it was for him. Huh? So... Part of how... Part of it was torn, has been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning to it. There's some meaning to part of it being ripped. Um, could you possibly explain a little, little more? Think carefully. Hey. Why would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tight? I, I have no idea. So then. What if it wasn't just the scrap of paper when he was holding it? Excuse me. What if it was something more important? And how would something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. The note Hifumi had has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Hey. 
And while you're, we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. So the e -hand so the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there was, was any reason to think they were all connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks. Is that time, right? Right? If you don't think if you don't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out my way to mention it. All I said was that they weren't used to carry out the murders. There may be a come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. A handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. But if Kyoko thinks it's important, I'd better keep it in mind. E-handbook has been added to the truth building section. All right. Are you excited? Are you pumped? <laughs> it's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks, like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death. And so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot. Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> it would seem... It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You'll have to figure out the rest for yourself and come to the proper conclusion. Yeah, you're right. Shall we go? Well, we better get going. Uh, okay. Music always hitting in Dangan. Like, always. Music always hitting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we gotta go into here. If I remember correctly. Yep. Here we are. Everyone... Oh, get the voices back. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation, and they were gathered by the red door. As soon as we were get all there... Monokuma appears! Hello! 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 He's multiplied? Wrong! Not! Nope! Not multiplication! It just looks that way because of an illusion! I'm moving so fast, it only looks like I've multiplied! <laughs> Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? He always on some crazy shit. Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy, You're not playing any playing along. Along along. Stop talking. We're not here to play with you. Okay. Okay, okay, fine. Hey, hey! Then if everyone here is ready, please board the pain the pain train or elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay, then, shall we? Please! H hold on! I'm not mentally prepared yet! You'll, you'll never be mentally prepared! You can't run away anymore, hero! You gotta pay for your sins! I told you already! I didn't do it for serious! Hmm. That reminds me. Do you ever find... Did you ever find that costume? Or the notes? Ugh. Um, well, no. But... <laughs> Unfortunate. Then it would seem we have our account. Uh, <laughs> hey. This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the court. Right. She's right. Let's get down there first. Then the story can really begin. Yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to. I have to do it. I can't let whoever killed Hifumi and Taka get away with it. For anyone who's still alive, and for the two that lost their lives. Like, look how Hifumi looked. Why his mouth wide open like that? Everything about Hifumi's death just rings fake to me. The one who killed Hifumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... Someone right here! Alright, let's get going. I took one last deep breath and exhaled so slowly. I began to walk towards the elevator. Once everyone was aboard, the doors closed on their own and the steel box began to move. Like one thing about this, this whole thing is, I gotta grab my water, one second, it's right behind me.
the uh, crazy thing about this for me is the fact that I honestly think that Celeste, Ao, and um, what's her face? The detective girl. I'm forgetting her name. Um, but I feel like all three of them have a part in this, honestly. And going all the way back to that note that we got from Hero, who he said it was his handwriting, right? But the meeting was orchestrated by Detective Girl. And I'm forgetting her name. I don't know why I'm forgetting her name, but... Um, Kyoko, there we go, by Kyoko, was detected, uh, was uh, orchestrated by Kyoko, um, and then this whole thing being pinned out on him, um, for him to not, or at least he could be claiming, but he doesn't have any um, awareness of him being, making that suit and being put in it, um, and all of them somehow just coincidentally are like pushing everything and putting everything on him. Um, and they're working like almost Ao and Celeste um, like are working together completely. Kyoko was nowhere to be found during all of this this proceedings and these happenings. And then it seemed like all of the stuff that was being found and being like caught up on was being led by Ao and Celeste. Um, anytime a body was discovered, anytime the the Robo Justice was being found, it was by Celeste or Ale, right? And the bodies disappearing when they left out the room, right? And got moved, right? It's just like everything that was happening is happening on their watch or within their vision. And it's just like, it's just, for me, it's ringing setup. Honestly, that's what it's giving. It's giving setup. That's just my thoughts on it. Let me know what y'all thought, uh, what y'all thoughts are in the comments. Um, the, clunk, the clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. There was no going back. Until we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. The ele elevator door slid open, opening up onto a cruel fate. Like, this is the first one where I'm like, I have no, like, I honestly don't have, I have assumptions, but I don't, I don't know where we're going with this. <laughs> when I see all of you gathered together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. Only because of you. Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? What? What? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute. Come on. Stop goofing around and begin the trial. Don't rush me. Of course I'm going to start it. I would never be like, stay tuned for the action packed class trial after this commercial break. I'll do that. I, I'd never hold out hold hold out on you like that. Okay, let's begin. Get to your assigned seats. And so, the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly fate, a deadly crash trial. Yes, we want to save. We overlap these saves. Open e handbook. Okay, where I set my water? Y'all know I need my water when I play this game. Um, review the layout of Hope's Peak Academy. This will help guide you to specific locations. Truth will is evidence. All right, so Monokuma filed the victims were Hifumi, Yamada, and Kiyotaka Ishimaru. The cause of death for each was a blow to the head. It is thought that they were both killed with a similar weapon. Then we got blue tarp. Uh, the tarp was found in the respiratory under Kiyotaka's lifeless body. It was apparently used to move Kiyotaka in order to avoid leaving any blood stains. Okay, so that was found under Kiyotaka. Then we have the dolly was found when the body was rediscovered in the respiratory. This specific dolly has no handles and blood was found on its uh, on one of its wheels. 
it is assumed that it is assumed that this is the same dolly that was in the equipment room where Kiyotaka's body was originally discovered. I think that's what they used to move Hifumi. Probably both of them, honestly, but mainly Hifumi. When they were first found in the nurse's office, Hifumi's glasses were covered in blood. However, when they were next seen in the respiratory, they were completely clean, which is another reason as to screaming fake. Like, you got your ass up after faking that, right? Clean your glasses off because obviously you can't see. And then put the blood back on there. That's obviously what he did, right? <laughs> Spotless hammer. Uh, hammers of all shapes and sizes were found in the respiratory. Um, one of them was found wet and had apparently been recently washed. Okay, so whoever was setting it up uh, painted the, the hammers, obviously. The door connecting to the art, uh, connecting the art room to the respiratory, was designed to open from only uh, from open only from the respiratory side. According to Ale, um, it was locked during the search for the missing body. We know it was locked because I went in there before anything, and it was locked. So I personally know it was locked. And we're not gonna just take like say what she said. I know that it was locked for a fact. However, when the body was rediscovered, it had somehow been unlocked. Then we got a puddle of blood was found in the equipment room where Kiyotaka's body was initially found. A tire track had been left behind in blood. So that's obviously where they was dragging the bodies up out of there with the uh, cart. Uh, cl class glasses cleaning cloth. The, cl the cloth was found in the trash can in the nurse's office. It was branded with a popular cartoon character and was found with blood on it. One uh, one has to wonder if someone used it to wipe some blood away. Obviously, that's probably what Hifumi used. Or if it wasn't Hifumi, I'm still thinking if Kiyotaka... I, I honestly don't think they did, honestly. But if Kiyotaka is dead because he played his part well, I, there's just a bunch of shit with Hifumi that's just questionable. Um, the fact that you opened your eyes up after Ao cried on you. And you gave this whole last speech and then died again? Like, that shit's just... And then they said, for them to say this is in a movie and then that shit happens right after you say that, it's just, it just rings red flags for me, right? But the cleaning, the glass cleaning cloth obviously would have been used on Hifumi's glasses. But why would you clean his glasses off unless you need to see seeth with them? The only person in, uh, in here that wears glasses is Hifumi, or at least wears glasses regularly is Hifumi. So why would his glasses be clean? That obviously was the cloth to clean off the glasses because there's blood on the cloth and his glasses originally had blood on it, right? And then it was thrown in the trash can in the nurse's office where Hifumi was originally discovered, right? And when he first was killed, he was discovered in the nurse's office, in the nurse's or the nurse's yeah facility. Um, so if he wasn't uh, dead and he moved himself to the respiratory room, right? And then like got in there right and then whomever else dragged his body or maybe he fumi dragged kiyotaka's body in there maybe he fumi killed he killed kiyotaka that was originally my suspect uh, suspicions is that they killed each other or one killed the other because of the fact that they were beefing about the ai program um uh, and both wanting to be super and they both were at the at the meeting um, so they both had to have been out there looking for so maybe they got an argument so that could have been a suspicion to where Hifumi killed uh, Kiyotaka and then framed it for himself to be killed as well um, who knows um, and then moved himself right and then moved Kiyotaka's body with the cart right um, that could have it could have played out like that but one thing for sure is this cloth was used to clean Hifumi's glasses and I think Hifumi wasn't dead there like cause why else right Celeste account Hifumi's body disappeared when Celeste and Ao left the nurse's office to use the bathroom apparently they weren't gone for more than two minutes a minute or two right so again right if what she's saying is true and it wasn't them who did it right Yashihiro's message this is the note that Yashihiro wrote to get everyone to meet in the dining hall meet in the dining hall is all it says the handwriting is remarkable remarkably neat <laughs> excuse me and clear right so obviously he got good handwriting or that was uh kyoko's handwriting and he just covered up for for whatever reason i don't know why you would do that but hey 
Because he said it was him who wrote it, right? We know women have better penmanship than guys more times than not, right? So it's hard for me to believe that. There are the blueprints for the Robo Justice, which were found in Yash Yashihiro's room, which once again, a setup could be, right? Why would you just leave that out and open? Like, if you were the person who created this costume, right? And you know you was going to go around killing people with it. Why would you leave the evidence in your own room, right? It just doesn't make sense. You can't be that dumb. No one but Yashihiro could have possibly fit into the costume. In addition to uh, anyone wearing it would not be able to see their feet or bend at the waist more than 90 degrees. Yashihiro's account. Apparently Yashihiro received a mysterious note uh, late night. The note reads, I found a hole maybe we can uh, use to escape. Used to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. So, hole gotta be like loophole, right? So, once again, tying and going back to that idea and that concept of this being like a setup type of thing, to where I don't know if he's roped in innocently and he like has no idea, or if he's involved in it as well and he's just playing his part, right? Um, but the whole, my guess, would be faking deaths right like faking deaths like killing killing each other but not really killing each other and you're faking your own like your deaths with he fumi and kiyotaka because how would um um monokuma know really right like obviously if you make it convincing enough like he won't he won't know he's not in these rooms as they're happening he's watching right but you you can't tell it's, it's, it's uh, exactly from a camera right it's, especially if you make it look real enough right so that loop that the, or that hole that the, this person's talking about, and I think that this is Kyoko, um, could be a loophole that they're trying to e exploit, right? So we just got to see how it's going to play out, honestly, I guess. Kiyotaka's wristwatch. Kiyotaka's wristwatch broke with the hands pointing just past 6 o'clock. It was confirmed that as of last, late last night, the watch still works, which means it must have broken the following morning when he was attacked. Kiyotaka's lifeless hand was found clutching a small scrap scrap of paper. Hifumi's had uh, had this Hifumi had this note hidden on him. One edge of it appears to be torn, which probably was the piece that Kiyotaka was holding. I found a hole. Maybe we sh uh, can use can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. So this was the same note that was sent by from that the person, from the same person that sent this to Hifumi, um, uh, but uh, to Hero, but it has a different time on it, right? E handbook. Each student has their own e handbook, which also acts as a card key. The owner of uh, is it believed that no e uh, handbooks were involved. Okay. All right. All right. So we went through all of our evidence. All right. So let's go. Let's start. Set skills, I guess. What we got? Influence. Cool and composed. Steadies your aim. Yeah, we need that. Um. What's this? Bathing, breathing technique. The focus gauge recovers. Oh yeah, we need that as well. All right, let's equip all that shit. Finish preparations. Let's start this trial. Y'all, I'm so confused. I don't know where where, where this, this is going. I don't know how this about to end up. But of the we about to find trial. out. So your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who, who died, done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Now then, to begin with, we already know who did it. Here we go. Was that? It was Hiro. Was that? <laughs> he does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found him in that suit. Mm. Don't try and deny it. You killed them. I didn't. Someone knocked me out. I, I was asleep the whole time. I don't know anything about it. Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! You even got genocide Jill accusing you? Wow. I am sorry to say, Hiro, but we do have evidence. What evidence? I want to see this. Blueprint for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. 
I just don't understand why. I said, that. if you planning and to do this, why would you leave it in your room? room. That would make sense. The evidence is quite we bought jealous. six murders in. Why would you be that stupid? It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. How many times do I have to tell you? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is Hero really the killer? Or, before anything else, we have to make that clear. Yashi Hero's message. Okay. Everything we found in your room. I pressed her. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. And everyone found it. How do I slow time down again? I don't know anything about that. Oh, there it is. It's not true. It's a conspiracy. Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! I mean, looking at the blueprints, the handwriting is awfully messy. Oh! Okay. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints. No, it's wrong! I didn't even pay attention to that detail. That's crazy. Are you sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote, asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego Yo. disappeared. Changing my sound real quick. No. The handwriting's obviously different. No, what do you say? <clears throat> When you compare it to the blueprints, there's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Facts. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. That's facts. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think Hiro's the culprit? And he's not the only one. I think Hiro's innocent as well. Thank you. Finally, you're on my side. Look you know how shocked we are. Justice suit. That ain't never the case. Is it like Hiro said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. Hmm. And of course, he passes it off to me. Who was in the Robo Justice suit? It was you! <laughs> the suspicious individual in question. The one, the Illuminati. Like, it was Hero. I got it. Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit. And we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense. You just said Hero didn't do it. Just because he was in a suit, it I mean, he did it. makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. Facts! So what you're saying is... Brain! Big brain! Come on now! That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the Robo Justice X. suit. It's just a distraction. What? Just a distraction. Now that's a bold assumption. And what reason do you have to make this such game a be throwing you do twist after reason, twist yes. at your ass? It's crazy. Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around. All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? Yo, yo, we got the blue tarp. There's still one more thing. Yep. 
the things that were used why y'all just didn't let me just auto select or just do both of them did I just go over it here we go I got it. just let me you just select everything I first and even had that and problem tarp, right? so let's see if I can explain did I get that wrong? Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room, and then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. Yep. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm it sure the dolly marks. was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the dolly. And there were tire marks. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, So did the doll. In other words, you think they use the dolly to move the body. Am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along and you simply didn't realize it? She's raised an objection. How do you respond? There is no shame in being wrong. And no one expects much from you anyway. Mmm! Even though I'm the one who solved these last... They ain't gonna stop coming for me. Let me you. Wow! I've never had anyone sound so nice while being so mean. But maybe I can change her mind. If I can just explain to them why the dolly must have been moved. The tire marks, Goofy. New element has been added to the bullet time battles. Would you like to hear more? Uh, of course. Y'all ain't about to leave me for dead like y'all try to do all the time. Let's talk about reloading. Starting with this next bullet time battle. We're going to add one more ingredient to the recipe. On the bottom of the screen, underneath the temple marker, you will see your ammo count. Up until now, there hasn't really been a limit on how you, uh, de how you destroy your opponent's statements. But from now on, just locking on and pressing the Y button won't be enough to handle them. Now it will cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements, no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the X button. Just like locking on, you will have to press X in time with the temple marker. Okay. Basically, just remember that the X button now has a function along with A and Y button. You will automatically reload at the start of fever time and your ammo will not decrease. Oh, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, you won't have to reload at all. In, K, in which case, you can ignore everything I just said. Well then, good luck and have fun. Wish I set my shit to gentle. You have right. it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. Oh, this is you tough. You don't want to. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Life can get you nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. I don't know why they make agree. trying to make this you so are tough. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. Can she die already? You Damn. Wrong. Agree. You are fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. Woo! 
Oh boy! Agree. Look out! This should prove it. Boy, Jesus Christ! If you're asking for proof that the dolly moved. I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out facts. of the room. Facts, facts, facts. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. Yup, got your ass. Well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then. What kind of robot is it? One of y'all. I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. Look back at how the body was... Okay. What does he mean by that? About to find out, I guess. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Yep. Yeah, the culprit wrapped the body in the car, mm -hmm. then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Yep. Well, yeah, but even without a handle, all you have to do is bend over. That shit up out of here. Come on! You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? Exactly. What do you mean? Can't bend over more than 90 back degrees. Back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together. Remember? I'm blind as a bat here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anything... Here I go again. Clicking A before I'm finished reading. Like I can read that fast. Like, slow down, nigga. Slow down. Damn. I'm telling you. It wasn't me. Oh. Wrong voice. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obviously oversight. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, it seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Exactly. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? Okay, I'm starting to think of Celeste. Why you? Why you good like doing so much? She's not usually this vocal and active. Like why you? Why you trying to like stir up the, the pot so much? On top of that. You were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit. It's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Exactly. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? But that's just doing too much. There's absolutely no chance that the costume was taken off just to move the body because Hero's not strong enough. Once it's on, you can never take it off. You can't take it off by yourself. I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you rem that right there is how you solve a murder. I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? I didn't make that stupid freaking thing. There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. 
That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then... you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up? Of course I wasn't making it up! If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Exactly. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So... It's really, really true that Robo Justice couldn't have moved the dollar? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? And look if fake whoever to me. was in that suit is not the culprit, and how Hifumi can you explain do anything that? for Celeste? Anything. Besides, do you Starting remember to come together. what the now deceased Hifumi said? How did you? Uh, how did you get hurt? That guy hit me. What guy? Robo Justice. Er. That's what I decided to call him just now. So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. The mm. individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. I don't yeah. understand. Like, this is... Yeah, that's gotta be right. I'm starting to see his... Uh, I'm starting to think it's Celeste. It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Exactly. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Exactly. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Exactly. Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. All right, then. Let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up. So we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. Mm -hmm. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after seven. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. As it turns out, it was Robo Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo Justice had abducted Yifumi. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Yifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office, What's wrong? I saw a, a shadow. Something moving around at the top of the stairs. <clears throat> when Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. And soon after that... I saw someone moving around on the third floor. And I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. Mm -hmm. Everything she said got... I'm gonna put quotations on. That was rather intense. Scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange custom costumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. And then... They love giving you reading points. Ooh! Huh? What, what was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been. He fooled me. He's in the nurse's office. 
This is bad. Come on. We have to go back. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office, while Sakura, Yakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found her food, dead. Mm. And that's when we heard the body discovery Dave. announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us. And she told us something very surprising. Hifumi's body has disappeared. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? But when we got there, we discovered but that when we got there, body had also gone missing. That's just too much like a diss. Like, I can't Next do that. thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. Which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well, if that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. The contradictions hidden in the and what happened to Taka. In order to uncover the truth of this case, I have to find them, no matter what. 